Hello, YouTubers, and welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up for restoring this week, I've got a Morris J2 pickup truck. This is a Matchbox Lesney model. And the current uh, going retail price on a mint condition copy of this model seems to be about $60. Um, needless to say, I spent about $6 for this model given its current condition. But uh, as this is a restoration channel, you know I like to find them rough. And this one certainly is rough. Um, this normally would have had a builder supply tampo or water transfer on the sides. That's long since gone. And this particular model appears to have been overpainted at some point in time. But uh, through many years of play and wear, even the overpaint coat has worn off of this. Um, when I originally saw this model, I thought the uh, wheels could be a silver plastic. Um, after I got it, I actually found out that they are uh, metal wheels. And so we are going to dive right in and start a full traditional restoration on this model of the J2 pickup truck. So the first step in this restoration, as with all restorations, is to remove the base and the wheels. Um, for this particular model, I had to be really, really careful because you can see these pins are not very deep. Um, they go just uh, a few millimeters beyond the bottom of the pickup bed and I uh, wanted to be very careful to make sure that I didn't drill through and drill into that bed below. Um, but I've got to drill enough to make sure that uh, I get most of the flange off. Um, and so I just went very, very slow with the flattest tipped drill bit that I have. And uh, now I think with just a little gentle persuasion, we should be able to remove the base. The base of this model is in about as rough a shape as the rest of the casting. Uh, as you can see, uh, the wheels have been overpainted. Um, they're a little bit bent here in the middle, and uh, these axles are really, really rusty. Um, so I think before I try to get anything loose um, or remove any of the ends of those, they're going to need a good soak in some vinegar. Uh, but we're hoping that uh, with a, a quick strip of the paint, um, you know, I don't see a lot of oxidation. Anytime there's this much paint gone, I worry about the integrity of the casting underneath. Um, and I can see here in a couple areas um, the color of the overpaint, both on the body and the wheels. And I can see underneath what the original color probably was. To do my vinegar soak, uh, I start with these little Tupperware containers. I originally I think my wife bought these for uh, freezing baby food for my littlest, but uh, they fit uh, one of these base models really uh, pretty nicely. Um, and then I use just a little plain white vinegar. Um, you don't want to soak these too long, especially on the metal wheel models, as I found that whatever kind of metal they used on these wheels, if you leave them in the vinegar for too long, um, it can actually completely dissolve the wheels or it makes the metal really kind of soft. Um, but it is still the best thing for rust removal and you can see some of the little bubbles coming up already. Um, it, it works very quick, very well. So I'm gonna leave this to soak for maybe about 20 minutes is all. Um, just enough that when I start to grind the ends of those axles, I can try to make sure that uh, those seized wheels um, will slip off the end of those uh, rusted axles. While our base is soaking, uh, I'm going to turn my attention to the uh, casting. Um, I've got another small Tupperware container. I want to make sure that it's high enough to completely cover my casting. 
and uh, I'm trying something new. I've used the citrus strip in an aerosol can for a long time, um, but I seem to go through the cans pretty quickly and it's somewhat expensive. Uh, so I'm going to try this jug of the gel. I'm hoping that, uh, like some of the other restorers that I've seen, that I can reuse that uh, stripper over and over and over uh, until it's pretty saturated with uh, removed paint. So here you can see our casting has had a couple hours to kind of sit and soak in the gel. Uh, so I'm going to pull it out here and see if our paint is letting loose and that's coming right off. Um, that actually seems to work much much better than the uh, than the aerosol. Um, I don't know if it's just the consistency that it's thicker and it sticks to the model a little bit better um, or if it's uh, a different formula but um, this appears to be coming right off so I'm going to work at this a little bit and see if I can get most of the big parts of the paint off uh, with my toothbrush. Um, and any of the little stragglers, any of the little pieces of paint that get down in the cracks, especially on these overpainted models, I always seem to have a little bit that just doesn't come off in the stripper. Um, and those I'll go after with my uh, dental picks. Now we have our stripped casting uh, all cleaned up. We've gone over that with a little soap and water. And you can see the uh, citrus strip gel really does a pretty darn good job. Um, the only areas where I still have a little paint is some of the little nooks and crannies down in the corner there of the bed um, and some of the deeper parts of the casting. And uh, I think that really the only way that I'm going to be able to get to uh, some of these more stubborn areas is with my set of dental picks. Um, I got this set. It's a pretty cheap set. Um, I ordered it off of Amazon. I do have a, a nicer set uh, that I actually got from my dentist, and I've talked about that in uh, one of my other tool time videos. But um, for this casting, I actually I like the cheap Amazon set. Um, the ends are a little bit softer. And because this is such a, a valuable casting and valuable model, I want to be careful that I don't um, put any scratches in it. Um, and so these, these cheaper picks, uh, they tend to bend before they would uh, do any damage to the original casting. So um, I'm just going to work at this a little bit, kind of work my way around the model and uh, see how much of this remnant paint that I can get off. So I think that because this model was overpainted, um, some of these corner areas of the bed really had a lot of really thick paint in them. And when I used my stripper, it just wasn't able to penetrate those areas where the paint was really, really thick, really deep, which seems to be all of the inside corners of the bed here. So. Um, the good news is that whatever the citrus strip does to break the bonds of the paint, as soon as I touch it with the, the tip, the point of my little dental pick, it seems to flake right out and it's coming off in big sections. So um, I think I should be able to get rid of the worst of uh, what's left here. Um, and as you can see, uh, I've taken a lot out. And then... Um, 
as a way to follow up, I like to just take a little alcohol on the end of a Q-tip and just kind of swab that out and make sure we get any of those lasting little crumbs out. So now that the base has had a few minutes to soak in some vinegar, I'm going to go ahead and try to remove these wheels and axles from the base. Um, I'm not going to go into a tremendous amount of detail on this. Um, I think it's been pretty well documented by most of the different Matchbox channels. Um, and I use just a square grinding stone on the end of my Dremel to remove the little burr that's on the end of the axle. Um, and then as soon as that's off, I can usually pry these uh, wheels off of the axle. Um, as I mentioned, this one's going to be a little bit tough just because the axles are so rusted and the wheels are seized. So it really did take some doing, um, but I was able to remove the wheels and axles um, just by prying gently on the side with a small screwdriver. So now the base is going to get the same treatment as the casting, and we'll put it into strip. As you can see from these uh, wheels and axles, um, I've got some of the rust off. That's from the, the little vinegar soak, um, but these wheels are still very firmly attached to the axles. And so um, I found the best way to remove that is to support the sides of the wheel. Um, I'm just using my pair of needle nose here. And then just to kind of gently tap on the end of the axle. Um, and then that should get the, the rusty part of the axle clear. And then once I get to the smoother part of the axle, the part that we soaked in the vinegar, um, I can usually get them to slide off. And, you know, these are 50, 60 years old at this point, so I want to be really, really careful with them. Um, I haven't broken one yet, but I, I've seen them break, and I know it's possible. Um, and then once I get the axles free, I'm going to go ahead and let them soak uh, probably overnight in the white vinegar, um, just to remove the rest of the surface rust that's on them. Um, and then uh, I'll finish that up with a little uh, quad -ot steel wool in the chuck of my drill, just to get those nice and smooth and cleaned up. With the wheels off, uh, now I can turn my attention to some of the overpaint that was on these. Um, now the short soak that I did in the vinegar has helped to loosen up some of this. Um, and I can certainly probably pop them into the citrus strip. Uh, but as I mentioned, the pop metal or whatever kind of metal they use on these wheels seems to be really soft and uh, sensitive to some of those things. So I'm just going to go at them with my dental picks. The paint on the original casting um, is kind of a mix between a baby blue and a turquoise. And so I've gone back to my little stash of uh, Tester's enamel paints and um, I've got a, a nice pale turquoise color. Um, I believe it's just called gloss turquoise. I think that's the Tester's color for it. Um, and I'm going to use that as my base color. Um, I know that the uh, original model is a little bit darker than this, and anytime I want to darken something up, um, I want to start with my lighter color first, and then I'll add my darker color to it. In this case, I'm using the Tester's uh, Gloss Dark Blue. Um, and I find it easiest um, to use my little eyedropper tools. And once I get my base uh, color in the cup, then I just add a few drops of the darker color to it, and then I'll do a mix. To mix my paint, I use this little battery-operated uh, cappuccino frother. Um, again, this was a tip I picked up from one of the other uh, Matchbox stores. And uh, it seems to just work really, really well. Gives a nice thorough mix, um, and I'm not worried about anything. After I get all my colors mixed up, I want to add a little bit of thinner to it. Um, and I can usually tell, because of my mixer, if I have my paint thin enough. Uh, the little motor in that frother is uh, powerful enough that with the right amount of thinner in it, um, it just spins and mixes great. 
And if I don't have enough thinner in it, it's going to be kind of sluggish when I mix it. It'll go around kind of slow, and I can tell it's a, a strain on the motor. So um, if it's too thick, it won't flow through my airbrush, and my mixer doesn't work right. And so that's a kind of a good uh, temper for me to see if I've got my mix and my colors right. Um, not quite happy with this yet. It's still not quite dark enough. Um, but as I've mentioned before, I like to sneak up on it. And I can always add another drop or two of blue if I think it needs to go a little bit darker. But if I get too much dark blue in there, um, it's going to take a tremendous amount of my lighter base to come back to where I need it to be. And uh, that's how you end up mixing way too much paint. Um, and, you know, these aren't expensive. It's one of the reasons I like the testers paints. Um, I think I spend about $2 for a, a jar of this paint, um, but I don't want to go through more of it than I need to. So um, I just work slow and add a little bit of dark until I narrow in on the color um, that seems to be right for the model. With my airbrush loaded up with my mixed up color, uh, I'm going to start working my ray around the casting and I like to do a, a first lighter coat, just a tack coat. Um, I don't prime my models. Uh, from the research I've done, Lesney didn't prime theirs when they were in the factory, and so I don't either. Uh, just go straight with it. Um, I have used some alcohol to clean the casting. I want to make sure I don't have any residual stripper on there, any oils or anything like that, any of the cleaner left. Um, so I clean up the base casting really, really well before I start and then um, I just go straight to my enamel paints and I find that doing a, a light first coat to make sure that everything is sticking and then slowly working my way around and building it up thicker and thicker um, on my third coat I like to do a nice heavy wet coat and uh, usually if I get it on uh, correctly I don't even need to do a clear coat over these I end up with a nice shiny enamel finish um, and, uh, you know, as close to what the factory original was as I'm able to duplicate um, with my tools in my shop. And so I've been real happy with that method and uh, it's the way I'm going to keep working. With my base and casting all painted up, my wheels and axles all cleaned up, uh, it's time to reassemble this little J2 pickup truck, this Morris J2. Um, so when I start with my axles, I always want to look at my wheels. Most wheels have a, a good side and a not as good side. And I always want to make sure that my good side is facing out. Um, so I'll kind of sort through them as I reassemble to make sure that the best sides of all my wheels are facing out um, and that everything lines up. And you can see with the, the axles free of rust and the wheels all cleaned up, um, they slide right back together uh, the way they were intended. So real happy with how those came out, especially the, the rough shape that they started out in. I really wasn't sure if maybe I was going to be looking for replacement wheels on this, but I uh, was able to, to save these originals, and uh, I'm glad that I, I did that. Uh, it was a lot more work and definitely a lot of time, but... Uh, Nothing beats the original. I ordered some replacement decals, uh, the Builder's Supply logo that would have been on this model originally. And uh, I got these from uh, MK Model Car, I think it's MK Model Cars or something like that. Um, I'll put the link down in the description, but um, I've used them for a lot of my replacement parts for uh, restorations. And um, the the tampos or the, the water slide, the water transfers that I've gotten from them have all been really, really good. Um, it's kind of hit or miss quality, and I've had some that I've ordered off of eBay that I was not very impressed with, but um, MK seems to do a really good job with their uh, their water slides, um, and these were no exception. Um, I do let them soak for just a little bit in the water, 
um, they they really don't take very long. Um, as soon as I see the background paper kind of start to go um, a little translucent or kind of start to turn, um, usually that is enough. And uh, I, I like to leave as much glue on there, um, so I don't want to soak them too long um, before I try to, to transfer them over. And then um, I've tried, uh, you know, uh, fine brushes before. Um, I've tried the um, Q-tip method before. And uh, really, most of the time, I find that um, I get the best feel for these things just using my fingertip. Um, so I want to line it up as close to where I want it on the truck as I can. And then uh, with a very light touch, um, just with the end of my finger, I'll uh, pull it off of the backing paper. Now once I get it on the model, um, I use just a damp Q-tip. And I like to keep it damp because that extends my working time while I'm moving it around and, and getting it shifted into uh, just the right spot. Um, and then when I'm happy with it, I'll actually flip the Q-tip around and I'll use the, the dry end, the back end, to start soaking up some of that surface moisture and that water that was left on the model. And uh, then I'll kind of roll it back and forth just to squeeze out any of that uh, water that's back behind the transfer. And that usually um, is enough to, to get it to set um, just about perfect where, where I want it. Um, and these were really easy. Um, in fact, probably the, the easiest part of the restoration was uh, putting the, the decals on. Um, and these look great. Um, you know, I found that uh, the, the white printing on the clear back, as you see the builder supply on the bottom, that takes a special printer. And a lot of the, the water slides that I get, um, they can't print white. So they'll change that to black or, you know, they'll, they'll make some adjustment to the water slides to make up for the fact that uh, they can't print white. And uh, I had that with uh, the evening news van that I did. Um, I got those from a different supplier and the background was clear. So I actually had to paint the white on the model. And uh, as you can see with this model and the size of that lettering, that's not something that I could ever freehand or paint. Um, and so I'm really glad that uh, I was able to find uh, really good water transfers that match the original perfectly um, and that were so easy to work with. So big shout out to uh, MK Models for um, making good stuff and I'm going to keep ordering from them. you can see our fully assembled base. Um, I used Marty's method on the uh, drill press to mushroom out the ends of the axles and give the little flange there to keep the wheels on. Um, and in this case I'm not going to drill and tap because there's just not enough material there. Um, but what I did do is I left a little bit of the flange on the bottom. Um, and so I think uh, if, I, if I wanted to, I could put a couple dabs of super glue, but I think in this case, all I'm going to do is just use my tweezers um, just to bend back the edges of the flange that I left and help to keep that uh, base in place. Um, most of these models are going to go on display in my collection. They're not to be played with again, and so uh, I'm not worried about it coming apart. The last thing I need... Um, to uh, put the, the finishing touches on this is to put back on all of the silver details. Um, and I always do this as my very last step just because this uh, the silver ink does take a long time to dry. Um, and if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, I'm not a patient person. And when you get this many hours and this much work into a casting and it's looking so good, it's so easy to mess it up and I've done it, I've stuck my fingers in things, I've had to completely strip and start over with the models. 
um, because I didn't let something dry or I didn't pay attention when I was doing it. And um, I just didn't want that to happen here. And so the very, very last thing that I do to complete a restoration is to go back in uh, with a very fine tip brush and a little of my Pilot Silver ink. And uh, I found that those Pilot pens, they, they seem to be the closest to the original match that I can get for the silver paint that Lesney used. Um, it's kind of a unique silver. It's got a little metallic in it, but it's not shiny. And uh, that's been a hard thing for me to find, um, especially in something that flows well and is workable. And I've been real happy with uh, the Pilot pens. They seem to do a, a really good job and they're easy to work with. So I'm just going to work my way around the casting and um, I'm referencing pictures because I don't have another one of these models. As I mentioned at the beginning, these are uh, a little bit harder to find. They tend to be more expensive, more desirable to collectors. Um, and so this is the only one I have. Um, and until I can uh, muster up a lot more uh, pocket change, um, I'm probably not going to have uh, an original of this casting. Uh, the really nice ones that I found are anywhere from $80 to $100, and uh, that buys a lot of other cars and fills a lot of other holes in my collection. So someday I hope to find a, a nice original mint or near mint copy of this model. Um, but for right now, this restoration is uh, going to fill that hole, and uh, I'm going to enjoy it. Um, so I'm just going to work my way around the model. I'm going to touch up all the bumpers. And, uh, and I do, because it's a restoration, I do like to add in a few more of those details that the ladies at Lesney probably would have done if they would have had a little more time uh, per car. But, you know, when they made literally hundreds of thousands of these and they had to crank them off the line pretty quick, um, you know, they could only spend a few seconds probably with each one of these castings. So... They were lucky to get the headlights and the grill, um, but I'm going to take my time and spend a little bit more um, on on this casting um, because it is looking so good, and I really like uh, the extra level of detail that it adds to showcase a few more of those little casting details. So we're going to hit the, the taillights and the rear bumpers and uh, the door handles and all those little things that... I think really made the, the Lesney Matchbox uh, casting so unique. And I think it's part of the reason collectors still love them today. Um, you know, Matchbox and um, Matchbox Lesney, they, they really had a much higher standard. You know, and I compare them to the, uh, the other models of the time. Um, they just seem to really have a lot more details than the Hot Wheels or the Corgis or um, some of the other brands that were out there. And so... Because that's one of the things that makes a Lesney Matchbox a Lesney Matchbox, I like showing them off. So here's a quick reminder of what this casting looked like when we started. Um, this was severely play-worn and over-painted at some point. Um, the original tampos were completely gone, and the casting was starting to show some signs of oxidation where the paint was lost. And here we have our completed restoration of the Morris J2 pickup truck. This has really been a fun little casting for me to work on. Um, I know I've done a couple customs and some other things lately. And uh, it was really nice to get back to doing just a true restoration. Uh, back to the original. Um, I do wish I had a box for this one. Um, as I mentioned, these... Models have been really expensive and very hard for me to find, but uh, if anybody's got a lead on a box, no matter the condition for this model, um, please reach out and uh, get in touch with me um, because I would love to have a box or even a box restoration to go along with this model. Um, but this has really been a lot of fun, and uh, it's definitely one of the new centerpieces of my collection. I just am tickled pink with how this turned out or perhaps tickled blue, um, but it's been a lot of fun to work on. I hope that uh, you all have enjoyed it as well. Um, as always, if you like the video, 
uh, give me a like down below. I'd love to hear your comments. I uh, want to know what you think I did right, what you think I did wrong, other things you'd like me to try on the channel, um, and uh, just, you know, your feedback. I'm always looking at how I can improve the channel, what I can do better, ways I can improve, and uh, I get that from you. Um, I do read all of my comments, so please leave me your comments below. Um, and then, as always, if you enjoyed what I do, you like watching these restorations, click that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with uh, all of our future videos. Join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.